My name is Fiona McIntosh, and together with Pamela, I'd like to welcome you all here and thank you for coming. I'm honoured actually to stand here tonight beside three inspirational women, uh, all of whom have shared passion for and commitment to raising awareness and advocating for a more respectful, caring, and sustainable approach to our environment in all that that encompasses, culturally, historically, ecologically, economically, and politically. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce the artist of the moment, Pamela Pauling. I think I know everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're delighted to have Zali Stegel, OAM, the independent federal mem member for the seat of Warringah, who's graciously agreed to open the show. Thank you for coming, Zali. But to begin with, to offer a formal welcome to country, to Gadigal land on which we stand, I'd like to introduce Yvonne Weldon. Yvonne is a proud Wiradjuri woman who maintains strong ties to her homelands of Kara and the Riverina. She is the current elected chairperson of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council. She's a board member of Domestic Violence New South Wales and a board member of Redfern-based Jarjuna College, which is a school for disadvantaged Indigenous children. For much of her life, she's been dedicated to bringing about positive change for Aboriginal people and communities. She has a passion for improving the lives of all through health, social justice, Aboriginal advancement, children's rights, education, child protection, research and evaluation. She's held key positions with the New South Wales government and Aboriginal community controlled sectors. And in her spare time, she's a writer. <laughs> and in 2017, was awarded the Alan and Onward Faber Writing Academy Scholarship. Please welcome Yvonne Rodolfo. Wow. Thank you. I mean, you are very cool. Uh, you, you press the leap, but it continues to exist this stuff. So, yes, so all of those things that I tried to um, hide, um, <laughs> out, uh, whether you like it or not. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers. I stand before you on the land of Eora. I've grown physically on this land, but in my blood and always in spirit. I am a Rotary. As was said, my name is Yvonne Weldon. I am a sovereign woman. I come from Cowra, here in New South Wales. I am the elected chairperson of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, who are the culture authority and the Aboriginal Land Rights Act for the land that we're on. I would like to pay my respects to all elders past and present, to all First Nations and to you and the many nations' lands you travel from today. A welcome to country is an age old tradition. It is more than just words, it is a spiritual process for honouring the ancestors' footsteps we are all walking in. Continuing the practice of the many generations before us to the many generations to come. The boundaries of our traditional owners are written into the earth's natural landscapes. The boundaries of the Aura are the Hawkes River in the north, the Nepean in the west, and the Georges River in the south. On behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, the elders, and the members, I welcome everyone to the land of the Gadigal. I acknowledge Gadigal people whose spirits and ancestors will always remain with this land, our Mother Earth. Across this continent, there are hundreds of nations, tribes and clans that have existed here for over 60,000 years. This country's first people are the oldest living culture of the world. As we're all joined here tonight, let us all remember and acknowledge the many warriors that created pathways for all of us, the ones recognised and the ones we've never heard of. My people have always listened and learned from each other, the environment, animals, elements and our ancestors. We don't live in isolation of body, culture, spirit, land and water because we are one, for in our blood it runs. We need to reflect upon the footsteps we're leaving to know where we're heading, shaping a society a country we can be proud of. And in these times, this pandemic, don't let the social distance make us socially absent, although we don't seem to be that distant. <laughs> <laughs> we must maintain physical distancing, but not creating barriers to our social connections. So whether it's through your work or your networks, creating an inclusion and acceptance and a resilience. All of us together can bring positive changes to multiple generations, starting with healing to the past generations by declaring what should not have taken place. To the present day generations, giving them hope and creating a future for the next generations, for everyone in this country. We are in this together and we can achieve positive change 
each and every day, bringing my people, your people, and all our peoples together. As you view and embrace the impacts of the endangered species and the biodiversity crisis presented by PAM, remember to reflect upon my people's stories and our connections to the land that were forever changed when we were raised from the view because of our practices. My people have lived in unison with this country for thousands of generations. So learn from our ancient practices because we are still here. So think about the difference you can make today that will become the milestones of the future, all our futures. So let us all draw upon my people's spirits as we continue on our journey. May my people's spirits walk with you and guide you as we strive forward for us all. Again, on behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, welcome to Gadigal Land. This always was, always will be Aboriginal Land. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>
that's where the technical feats come to the fore. Layering, editing, stitching, rescaling, repositioning, even recolouring. The thrill of the photographic medium. And then the narrative around her chosen theme, that of extinction, becomes ever more potent. The beauty of the imagery and the narrative which binds them is something that we cannot look away from. This is the work of a confident artist. And this confidence is not something which happens overnight. It's a lifetime of effort and thinking and experimenting and learning. It's, this series has been a labour of love for Pamela. One, one thing that she's particularly enjoyed is that it's been a collaborative process, working with horticulturalists and wildlife carers to identify the threatened species and to her sister to capture them. I'd like to congratulate Pamela on her commitment and her efforts and her determination as an artist to carve out opportunities to create work, to share her work with new audiences and to enjoy this recognition. But now I'm also honoured and delighted to introduce our guest speaker for this evening and who will formally open the show. Zali Stegel, OAN, is the Independent Federal Minister for the seat of Warringah, which encompasses the northern beaches of Sydney, where Pamela and her family live. Zali has an impressive background and had made her mark well before her political career began in earnest in 2019. She is Australia's most successful alpine skier, winning a bronze medal in slalom at the 98 Winter Olympics in Nagano and a world championship gold medal in 1999. I think she went to four Olympics, which is 16 years at the top of an elite sport, which is extraordinary. In 2007, Zali was awarded the Order of Australia Medal for charitable works and contribution to sport. She subsequently pursued a legal career and in 2008 was admitted as a barrister specialising in commercial, sports and family law. In 2019, Zali contested the federal parliamentary seat of Warringah as an independent candidate and resoundingly, resoundingly defeated the incumbent. Her election platform was around and remains climate change and the urgent need for Australia to enact policies and practices to minimise its impact. As a federal minister, hers is one of the more reasonable and intelligent of voices in Parliament, <laughs> speaking out for greater respect, transparency and particularly recently, gender balance across the political spectrum and processes to ensure greater integrity and trust. We thank you for your leadership. Please welcome Zali to open the speech. Thank you, Fiona, for those kind words. Um, I always get taken back in time quite away <laughs> when I hear all that. Um, and uh, thank you, Yvonne, for such a beautiful welcome to country. Um, I too would like to acknowledge the elders, past, present, and emergency, emerging not just here on the lands of the Botanic Gardens, but also from the area of Warringah. Um, and in doing so, I do acknowledge the immense sorrow created by the separation that was endured and separation from land, from family and from culture. Um, and in doing so, I also dedicate myself to working hard towards genuine healing. Uh, there's so much that we can do and learn from our Indigenous community not least about art and nature that we're here to celebrate tonight, but how do we take better care of this land that sustains us? Pamela, um, thank you for inviting me to officially launch this wonderful exhibition. Uh, it's a first for me. I like having a few firsts, so I'm very honoured to join you tonight um, for such an extraordinary collection of works. When, when Pan's first email first came in um, to me uh, about the opening, I was sitting at my desk in Parliament and my staff, who several of them are here tonight, actually printed off copies of some of the work and I was straight away awestruck at how beautiful but also how compelling um, and moving the images were. Um, you've just used amazing skill and creativity to literally uh, put on a spotlight on our endangered um, flora and fauna, but also why it really should speak to all of us, to our, to our heart and soul of why we should be all fighting so hard to protect it. Because it hasn't, it's not a great story that we can tell in Australia in terms of our biodiversity loss um, and deforestation. We, we are a unique continent 
but our record is not good. Um, and we do have the opportunity to turn it around, but it takes will, and I do believe it takes will from the people. Um, we need to educate people about our biodiversity crisis. A lot of people simply don't appreciate the extent of the problem. Um, in The Guardian recently, citing the United Nations Global Assessment Report, it, it's globally accepted that Australia is in, a, in an extinction crisis unfolding in plain sight in Australia, and we are sitting by and failing to act. Um, it's quite distressing when you do visit places that are just simply ransacked um, and have lost so much. More than 50 animal and 60 plant species have been lost, with Australia recording the highest rate of mammal extinction in the world over the last 200 years. Uh, I've recently had the opportunity to be on the feral cat uh, in parliamentary inquiry, and we're looking at the, you know, the implication that that has had on our native species, and it was quite, uh, it, it's, it's encouraging and heartening when you see the work that is being done to bring back species and try and create some protective habitat areas, but to understand our lack of education, our lack of action across so many years is quite um, sad. Conservative estimates put more than 1,800 plant and animal species and woodland, forests and wetlands at risk of extinction due to pressures from climate change, land use practices, habitat loss and invasive species. And there is something we can all play. We can all make a difference individually. I know a lot of people feel that the problem is so large, what can I as a one single person really do about it? But if Pamela's work is anything to go by tonight, is that we actually all can do something about it. We can speak up and take action. Environmentalists and conservationists say that the downward, downward trend could be stopped, but it does need meaningful government intervention. Um, there is a sense of urgency that some governments don't seem to get. Uh, protection of the environment was a big motivator for me, obviously, in running for the election. And it's been quite an amazing journey the last two years. Um, I feel like I'm a long way from the snowfields uh, when I am in Parliament and looking at what, what happens down there. Fact-based policy doesn't win the day often enough. Um, we have too much vested interest and too much um, uh, apathy in our, in our political class and especially in government for doing the right thing, for taking the action on the facts when they know and they're presented before them. We had a classic example of that late last year when after a really lengthy review, we had the Samuels review into protection of our biodiversity and we had the government rush through uh, the amendment to the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Act, which was a really important piece of legislation. Um, and it was rushed through with about half an hour's debate, no one allowed to, you know, the debate was gagged, amendments were not allowed to be moved. Um, and this legislation was uh, an absolute botch job, but it was passed in a hurry to facilitate more more devastation, really, essentially, um, and, and, uh, and interests that just go against protecting the environment. It is stuck, the legislation. You'll be glad to know that it hasn't made it through the Senate, so at least that's a good thing. But it's really important that we have more voices speaking up for what good management can look like, what, good, what are the good things that we can do. I feel I've had this discussion, actually, um, with Fiona, and I think we really should... Um, I think we need to get your artworks down in Canberra in Parliament House. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of, you know, there is definitely a toxic culture in Parliament, but one of what there is is amazing artwork. Um, in the private section, so the sections that the public doesn't get to, that you do need a visitor pass to, to be, you need a pass to come in. We have just the most amazing artwork, uh, you know, compilation of Australian art around the Parliament House. But if there's one thing that I miss in Parliament House is a little bit more nature and a little bit more real life. Um, there isn't, uh, it's quite, it's very abstract, but it's very, um, I won't say soulless, but I think it is removed from nature. 
There are very few plants, there are very few living things, and very few reminders of living things. Um, and if you think about government and what we are there to do, we are there to pass laws that will either protect our environment and biodiversity or trash it and, and, and have a terrible legacy for the, our future generations. So I definitely think we need Susan Lee, Minister <coughs> for the Environment, to see your artworks. We need a corridor, a walkway for the Prime Minister where he has to walk past <laughs> these, these works. To be reminded when you're passing legislation, when you are dispensing with uh, checks and balances to ensure there is a good balance between development and preserving the environment, um, taking action on climate change, because this is our biggest challenge ahead. Uh, unfortunately, we're on track to over three degrees of warming on our current policies, and it means we all collectively have to do something about it. And we all have the power and the ability to do something about it. Don't ever be, um, uh, I guess, a lot of people feel overwhelmed by the complexity and the difficulty of the task. But the UN has come out with a report that says 60% of our global emissions are as a result of individual choice. So you have got power in the choices you make in your lifestyle and where you, where you bank, where you support, what you do, how you vote. So there is definitely choice. But what we do see in these works is just a beautiful reminder of what we're fighting for. It's very easy to feel down and depressed by the scale and the size of the challenge ahead. And I think it's really important to be reminded of the beauty about what it is that is so important to preserve for future generations. I do feel that keenly, the, the, what will be our legacy. Um, and, and so that was one of my major motivators for getting into politics, um, was to try and bring some sensible discussion to the table and to try and be focused on results and outcomes. Uh, less vested interest and more um, about sensible management, sensible opportunity, recognising, putting a price putting a value on beauty and, and that biodiversity. So thank you, Pamela, for your works because they are a beautiful way of encapsulating that. Because um, we do need to educate everybody on what it is that we need to fight for. Because if you don't see it, you maybe don't appreciate it. And we probably don't all get the opportunity to visit the amazing collections behind the scenes or go to far flung places to see all these birds in their natural habitat as you probably have had the opportunity to. Um, but we can certainly, through your work, um, have that opportunity to, to experience it. Mm. Um, there is so much vulnerability and inherent beauty in, in our planet, in our species. Um, others much smarter than me have put it much more eloquently than me, so I don't even try. But I do appreciate the works, especially around the representation of each state, um, and, and the flora, unique flora and fauna. Um, one of the quotes that you gave recently, that your pieces of work aren't necessarily literal, but they are real. I definitely wish that there was a little bit more real in Parliament. I hope that as an independent, I can bring a bit more real. I still can't think of myself as a politician. Um, I just think of myself as a, a very ordinary citizen trying to bring a bit of real to Parliament. Uh, and to Canberra. Um, I wasn't at all surprised to hear that your work's been nominated and shortlisted for various awards. Um, most recently, selected as a finalist in the Smithsonian Photograph Contest, so congratulations on that recognition. Um, <coughs> congratulations everyone for being here, for supporting her. Um, it's been a really tough year for the arts. There's no doubt about that COVID has been a challenge and the government, I don't think, has always really heard the call for the support uh, for the creative arts that's been necessary. Um, so it's really important that we be here, that we support Pamela and other artists. So ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to officially declare Fragile Beauty, Rich and Rare, officially open.